glad to see everybody came back this evening. You guys ready to praise the Lord? Thank you for what he's done today. Yeah? I hope. I hope. Go ahead and stand on with us and sing this first song, Faithful Now. So I want you to sing up on it. It's a newer one. It's hope again. Talk about Jesus, I love you. So that's what all today is about, is loving on the Lord, right? Praising Him. Jesus, my refuge in times of trouble. When my heart's heavy, you're always strong. And if hope seems lost, I'll look to your cross. Death's not the ending, cause then came the morning. Death's not the ending, cause then came the morning. Jesus, I love you, oh how I love you. You are the one who gives me hope again. I'll bring my praise to the God of praise. My God is faithful, hope 
springs to turn. My God is faithful. Hope springs eternal. Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. You are the one who gives me hope again. I'll bring my praise to the God of breakthrough. You are the one who gives me hope again. of Jesus Christ hope is coming hope is coming sing it again here it's been the longest night hope is coming so leave your fears behind It's been the longest night, hope is coming, so leave your fears behind. Hope is coming, because of Jesus Christ. Hope is coming, hope is coming. Sing here. Jesus, I love you. God of breakthrough, you are the one who gives me hope again, the only one who gives me hope again. pray that you would just continue to guide us throughout our lives and that we would always have our focus on you and that we would always remember to love you. And Father, we do thank you for everything you've done yet to do. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Cecily. In Isaiah 43, it says, uh, Fear not, behold, I will do a new thing. How many of you are glad he does new things in our life? Amen. And uh, tonight we'll be in Genesis 21 22. If you want to go there, it's not too far from the beginning, obviously. You'll be there quick. And I want to do a little re review with you, but I want all the kids to stand tonight. Where's all the kids at? Can I get all the kids to stand on your feet real quick? Tommy, you can be seated. The biggest kid in the bunch right there. All the kids, are all the kids standing up? Say, uh huh. I didn't hear you. I said, uh huh. Okay, we got a couple of big kids over here, too. I like that. Um, here's what I want you to remember from last week. What was the name that we said meant, you are the God who sees me? Anybody remember? Elroy. Elroy, that's right. Everybody say, Elroy in the count of three. One, two, three. Elroy. That's right. I want you to remember that, and that means you are the God who sees. You may be seated. Thank you uh, for standing. I want our kids to. Uh, realize he is the God who sees, um, and that's not necessarily to keep you in line, right, even though that might help, uh, but he's the God who sees, and he knows 
all about your life and he cares all about your life. And so um, El Roy or El Roy, uh, we saw that in our scripture last week. And I just want to remember that and, and uh, refresh us with that. We have another name we're going to look at this evening through the passage, which is very similar to that one. But I just want to um, really emphasize that. How many of you use that this week in some way? You put it somewhere. We asked you to put it somewhere. Would you remember? Did anybody use that a little bit? Maybe maybe a couple of you, a couple of you. All right, awesome. Uh, for me, uh, those little reminders uh, make such a big difference in our impact of our walk during the week. Uh, a couple other things we've been reviewing. I just want to hit these. We're getting close to the end of this series, and I just want you to get some of these truths deep inside of you. Uh, one of them was God is able to develop us when we truly depend on Him. How many of you want to be developed? Say amen. I want God to develop me, and, and I want God to develop all of us. And so we've got to have this, this urgency about our walk and say, God, I want you to, to develop me, but I really want to be able to depend, truly depend on you. And so when, I, when God, is able to, uh, God is able to develop us when we are depending, when we pull back from Him, that's when our development goes to, to the side. Uh, when God gives vision, he always makes what? Provision. And I want you to remember those because in your life, there's going to be a time where you're going to say, okay, God, you told me what to do, and, and now it doesn't feel like it's coming, uh, coming to pass or something's not quite working out right like I thought it would. Uh, God, please help me to remember the promise of your word. We also talked about the biggest blessings in life can be traced back to the smallest steps of faith. What are those steps of faith that God's been stirring about in your heart? Um, can I just ask you a question? Have you been asking God for that step of faith? Have you been asking God, God, what is it in my life? What area of my life do I need to take that step? And then we also said, I want you to be reminded that God is 13.7 billion light years bigger than you think he is. You have a big, big God. And so I want us to remember those things because a lot of times when the distractions of life start happening, we forget some of those things. Uh, we talked about also that the things that we need to remember, we forget, and we forget the things we should remember. Uh, we must trust uh, that God, uh, God's way, God's ways are always, always best. And so remembering that and looking into our verse, Hebrews 11.6, how many of you have been working on it? Let me see your hands. How many have been working on it? How many of you have been working on a different verse? Let me see your hand. How many of you haven't memorized a verse in like three months? How many of you haven't memorized the one in six months? Right? I'm trying to convict you a little bit, right? Um, so I want you to, to learn the Scripture, right? We all need challenge to learn the Scripture. And I want to encourage you to memorize Scripture. It doesn't have to be the Scripture I give to you or someone in your Bible fellowship class gives to you, but I believe we always need to be working on some portion of Scripture. And this is one that we've picked and we've been working on, and I tried to quote it this morning in class and fumbled it up a little bit. But uh, Hebrews chapter 11, 6 um, try to say it with me without looking, all right? So we'll get started together. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to encourage you to make memorization a part of a husband-wife relationship, right? Um, I know sometimes Stacey and I will pick a verse and we'll kind of quiz each other. So we're not prepared and we're not cramming, Right? Uh, I want you to learn scripture. I want you to be able to quiz one another. Do this with your kids too. You know, pick a verse obviously that they could get, grab a hold of, something that's applicable, applicable to them and use it in their life, even if it's a part of a verse, even if it's that, that first phrase of that verse. But without God, it is impossible to please him. And I know our goal is to please him, and so we must use our faith in doing that. In Genesis chapter 18, I want you to look at a verse there, and also in 21, we'll look at a couple verses. But go to Genesis 18, just probably a page from where you're at right now. Genesis 18, and verse 4, or excuse me, 14. It starts off with a question, and that's the question that I really want you to uh, grab a hold of tonight, and that is the simple question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Can you say that with me? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Obviously, in Abraham and Isaac's story and in their life, there were several things that they could look at and say, you know, that seems really hard for the Lord to do that. Or this seems to be really hard. You would pick something else. Obviously, you're not living the story of Abraham and Isaac, but you would pick a story and say, this seems to be really hard for God. But obviously, the scripture says, is there anything hard 
too hard for the Lord. And then it goes right into, at the time appointed, and I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. The promise is given, the, the statement is there, it's, there's no question about it, and it actually answers the question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And obviously the answer is what? Absolutely no. In Genesis 21, verses 1 through 6, I want to look at this for just a moment before we get into our short video tonight. In this story, there's so many different uh, emotions that come to mind, and I hope that you'll get into the story tonight. Everybody say, get into the story. Uh, we, we really try to live what's happening in this. If you're a lady, can you try to really see what it felt like to be Sarah? And if you're a guy, can you really see what it felt like to be um, Abraham? And then if you're one of our young people, can you kind of get into the, the head of Isaac tonight and kind of really feel and sense what it would be like to be him? In Genesis 21, 1 through 6, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time. Everybody say set time. The set time was God's timing, right? And that's so hard for us to see sometimes, God's timing. A set time, God's timing of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And what did the name Isaac mean? He laughs. He laughs. This was another, this was the second object lesson, right? How many of you uh, really can go into your life and look in the past and see an object lesson that God did for you? Can you see one of those? It could be through a person. It could be through a situation. It could be even through maybe a vehicle. It could be through a lot of different avenues that God just gives you an object lesson in your life. I hope you won't miss those. I don't want to miss them. But he says he laughs because obviously... Abraham and Isaac both laughed. If you look through this story, you'll find places where they laughed because of the promise and because it seems so impossible. Obviously, there's nothing too hard for God. And Abraham uh, circumcised his son Isaac as, as he was to do on the eighth day, as God had commanded him. And Abraham uh, was how old? 100 years old. It's really hard for us to really get into that part of the story. If you're a guy, and there's not many of us who know anyone who's lived 100 years, Right? How, does that, how would that be to be Abraham and be 100 years old and, and now have waited almost a quarter of a century uh, to, to actually see the promise fulfilled? Talk about waiting and talk about how difficult that would be. Abraham knew all about that, and Sarah obviously as well knew. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. How many of you like to laugh? Don't you enjoy to laugh? But it's so much fun to, to laugh with someone, right? Um, how many of you, uh, probably, if you go back to, let's just say, maybe a, a birthday for one of your kids, but you just remember a time uh, where the kids were laughing and you were like, what in the world is going on in there? And you go around and, and, and look and there's just something funny going on and everyone's laughing. Don't you just love to hear the laughter of those around you? And I love that Sarah had, it seems like she had, a sense of humor after all this was done. She was like, you know, I, Sarah says, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. I want to encourage you to find ways to laugh. Look for things uh, to do that help you laugh. Look for uh, things that you can do to bring joy into your life because life has so many difficulties. The whole goal of parenting, right, parents, help me out. The whole goal of parenting is to take a child from being a dependent to a what? To independence. So how do we do that? First of all, we feed them, right? Then we burp them. Then we rock them, right? Then we clean them, and then we clean them, and we clean them, and then we change them, and we potty train them, right? And then we clothe them, and then we teach them, and we pay for them, and we keep paying, and we keep paying, and we keep paying, right? This is how you take a dependent to an independent. Uh, does anybody know what diaper spelled backwards is? That's right, repaid, all right? So when you have to change those diapers, Ronnie, you're getting repaid for what your mom and dad had to do, right? They're, you're, they're, you're getting repaid when you have to change those diapers, right? Uh, when, when we have to go through so much to help a child get from dependency to in, in, independency, when we do that, it's just the opposite of what God wants for us. Does that, does that kind of mess with your brain for a minute? God doesn't want me to be independent. He wants me to be 
dependent. So with, with God, God wants us to completely depend on him. I want us to try to relive Abraham and Isaac's story for today, for this evening. I want you to listen uh, to the video here in just a minute. I want you to listen for things that are said. And can you look at me tonight? Can you find one statement that's said in this video that strikes a chord with your heart? If you were to live in that story, if, if the ladies were going to be Sarah, and if, if the guys were going to be Abraham, and, and the young people tonight would be Isaac, what would be one of those things that are said in this video that would stick with you? I want you to listen for it and jot it down. What have you done, Lord? What have you done? What about thou shalt not kill and let the children come to me and something about a millstone around your neck if you hurt a little one? Yet you want me to give up my son, the child you promised, because you have a plan? You know, I have plans for him too, Lord, and they don't include this. Not this. He's just a kid. A kid. He loves life, and he's good at it, too. He's never lost his sense of direction, never stumbled over his purpose, never taken for granted the beauty of your creation. He's never turned away anyone in need. You know the measure of a man's days. You know each sparrow that falls. Why waste your creation? Why give life just to take it away? I taught him how to walk, how to ride a bike, how to catch a fish, throw a ball. I taught him how to walk. And he would follow me to death if you asked. It would be better if you took me instead. How am I supposed to explain this to Sarah? You haven't failed me yet, Lord. But I'm out of ideas. So I'm counting on you to provide and deliver. All right, what's one statement that sticks out from that video? What's one statement? Just ladies, help me out. Men, help me out. What's one statement that kind of just sticks out? Just raise a hand, tell me. You haven't failed me yet. Someone else. What's one statement that just stuck out? Daniel. I give life if you're just going to take it. These are real statements. These are real emotions, right? That had to be happening. What's, another, what's some other thoughts? Yeah. Just a child, just a kid. Provide and deliver, said there at the end. Micah? Take me instead, Lord. Then, what is it? I don't see a way out. He said, I'm out of ideas, all right? What's some other things? Young people, what, what did you hear? I know that that wasn't really Isaac speaking, but Abraham, but what, what, what sticks to your mind of what was said there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just what, what did that feel like, right, as, as that boy? Yeah. What's some other thoughts? What's some things? Yeah, I hear one over here. I see one over here. A couple. Go ahead. Taught him how to walk. Either one. Go ahead. Take me. Okay. Go ahead, buddy. Kara, I can't hear him. To the other one. It's okay. One more. Go ahead. Told him how to throw a ball, how to walk. Yeah. You got one? He's just a kid. Just a little kid. Um, someone on this side. 
Give me your thoughts. What was, what's something that, that grabs a hold of you? What grabs a hold of you in that? If you were living the life of Abraham and Isaac, what, what gets a hold of your heart? Has it failed me yet? Who said that? Yeah, okay. Jaden, what, what do you hear when you hear those comments? Take me. You know, it's very sobering when we think about what this really was like, and this is kind of, I'm going a little bit ahead in my notes, but when I think about this whole process and this culture, they would actually, uh, there was other um, false religions that would, uh, or false gods that they would, other people would offer their children as an offering. So they would offer their children to a false god, and um, when you compare that to um, offering your child as, as an offering, okay, to the true God, which one would be actually significant, right? Which one would actually be what God would want us to do? But obviously we know that that's not the real principle here. The real principle here is full surrender. The, full, the, the real principle here is, is giving it all and, and giving it all to him and letting him have it. And some of the things that were said that struck me is, uh, what have you done, God? You know, when things don't make sense and you're like, God, what have you done? Why, why is this happening? What have you done? Uh, you want me to give up what? You want me to give up what? That you promise you want me to give this up? Why would you ask me to give something up when you promise to me? This just doesn't make sense, God. Why do you want me to give this up? Uh, my plans didn't include this, God. These weren't my plans, right? These weren't my plans. God, why are, why are you changing the plan now? Why give life and, and just take it away? All the things I've done and all the things that I've taught him, what are, what are they for? What, what's the purpose? There was one little thing that he said in that video. He said he would even suffer uh, to die for me. He, it was almost like he knew his heart's child, that his heart was, the heart of his child was so soft that he would surrender to, to this. And we'll obviously we'll see that. Don't take him, take me. What about Sarah? God, what will I say? How will I explain this to her? Um, I don't know of many guys in here that could handle this kind of pressure, right? Could you handle this kind of pressure knowing that your wife doesn't know and you got to tell her? Say, oh, no. <laughs> Everybody say, oh, no. I, I don't know if I can tell her this, right? I don't know if I can share this with her. But I can, as you go through the story in just a minute, you're going to see the, the faith of Isaac as well. You're going to see the faith of Abraham. He said, I'm out of ideas. I know a lot of us have been there before. God, I don't know what to do now. God, you've not failed me, and I'm counting on you to provide and deliver. Genesis 22, let's go there. Genesis 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. What does that mean? It means to test, to try, to put to proof. Put to the proof. Have, have you felt this way in your Christian walk that God is proving me right now? God is, God is testing me right now. Have you felt that before? And Abraham obviously is, is understanding this and realizing it. And it came to pass out of these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Everybody say those three words. Here I am. This is, this is where the, the, the real proof of full surrender is happening. He says, here I am, God. Here I am. I, I'm here. I'm here. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. Can I ask us this? What do you love the most in life that if God was to ask for, it would be so hard for you to give up? What do you love so much in your life? And if God asked for that, would you be willing to give it up for him? That's a hard question to answer. Would it be a success? Would it be an achievement? Would it be something that you've built, something that you've made, something that you've acquired for your family? What would be that one thing that you love that, God, I just don't ask for that, God. Please don't ask for that. I don't want to give that, God. Please don't ask for that. What would that be? Because here Abraham is in this actual position where the thing he loves the most, God is asking for. And it says, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer means to go up or to climb. I want you to climb this mountain and I want you to climb this difficulty because I'm going to ask you to offer him as a burnt offering upon a, one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Again, it's this little tease, right? It's this little by little. He not only says, I want you to do this, but I'm not even going to tell you what mountain it's going to be yet. Just start walking 
and I'll show you. Just like when he told him to leave his homeland, he says, little by little, I'm going to show you. Everybody say, little by little. Little by little, it's not going to make sense. It's not going to feel good. It's not going to be the most favorite thing. He's going to ask for something you really love, and will you be willing to give it? And he's going to say, little by little, he's going to instruct you. So I asked the question, what was God's purpose for such a test? What is God's purpose in the test that you might be in, or have been in, or could be coming? What is God's purpose for such a test? How would Abraham have felt after God's command? After I received this command from God, he has asked me to do this. He's asked me to give something I love. How would that feel? What would that do? And the only word that really comes to mind to me is disoriented. Totally disoriented to lose sense of direction. Right? I'm just totally just blown away. I don't know which way to turn. God, you're asking this of me, but I don't know how to work through this. Ask us this question tonight. Have you ever felt disoriented by God's leading in your personal life? And how have you felt disoriented? When something didn't make sense, or God feels like he's asking you to take this step of faith, and you're like, God, I don't know if I understand why you're asking this of me. And how has that felt? How can you compare your life to Abraham and Sarah? Moving on in the story, it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and he saddled his donkey and took two of the young men with him, Isaac and Isaac, Isaac, his son. So there's three young men with him, his son and two other boys. And it says they clave the wood. And I looked up that word clave means to break open. And so they have this wood. But I can only imagine in in Abraham's mind, he already knows what's been asked of him. He already knows what God has asked him to do, but he sees all the supplies for something he's not looking forward to. So here's all these supplies. He's not only got his son, but two other boys there with him. And he knows what's going to happen. Could you imagine the emotion that's building up in Abraham's heart when he sees the wood? And it's broken and ready for the offering. And it says he rose up and went to the place which God had told him. And so little by little, God explains to him where he wants him to go. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. He was like, that's got to be where God wants me to to offer Isaac. And Abraham said unto unto his young men, Abide here with this donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder to worship and worship. And notice these words, and come again to you. I want you to notice that. I know you've seen it before, but I want you to realize that there's real faith happening here in the life of Abraham. He's like, I I know God's asked this of me, but I know somehow he's going to deliver and he's going to provide. What is it that God needs to provide for you? What is it that God needs to deliver for you? Maybe it's one of your kids. One of them, maybe it's one of your family members. Maybe it's, maybe it's one of your coworkers. I don't know what it is that God needs to be a part of delivery. But how is your faith when it comes to that? And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon, oh man. He took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac. So he gives Isaac the pieces that are going to be laid on the altar and then Isaac's going to be laid on. Now come on guys, help me out. Go with me here. Are you, are you catching the emotion that's getting involved here in, I, in Abraham's life? Isaac doesn't know what's about to happen, but Abraham knows what's about to happen. And he lays the wood upon his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. So Abraham has the fire, or what they would use to start the fire, and the knife. And they both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, excuse me, and Isaac spake, and to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. Notice those words again. He says, Not here I am, but here am I to his own son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. And we've all asked this question in a different way, but where is the lamb? Can you ask that question? Where is the lamb? Say it with me. Where is the lamb? Now, I see all this other supply, God, but I don't see one of the most important things that I'm looking for, and that's the lamb. And Isaac is asking, Dad, I see all of this, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide. 
Everybody say that. God will provide. Say it with some heart. God will provide. Could you imagine Abraham trying to tell his son when his son has the wood on his back and he's carrying, he says, son, my God will provide. I don't know what you need provided for. I don't know what's ahead of you. I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know what's ahead of us, but I don't know what vision God has put in your heart for your family or what's happening. But God says, I will provide. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, says those words again. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there. I just want to encourage you with these words again. Last week we saw that Abraham stopped building some altars. He stopped building them, and his last altar was in in chapter 12, and then we get to some of the other later chapters, and there's no altars being built. And I want you to notice that here Abraham obviously knows there needs to be an altar built. And I want to ask you, and I want to encourage you to build altars this week. I don't know how often you're kneeling to pray, but I want to encourage you to humble yourself before God and pray before Him. And realize God will provide whatever it is that you're looking for. For him to provide. It may not come at your timing, but God will be working when you're doing your part and you're doing what you should be doing. And Abraham was doing just that. He built the altar, doing what he was supposed to do, obeying what God had asked him to do, and laid the wood in order. I think I would have been taking a really long time <laughs> to lay that wood out. I would have been kind of just waiting, trying to see, okay, what's God going to do? God's going to provide, but how is this going to happen? I'm laying wood on on the altar right now. I've already built the altar. That took a little time, but now I'm preparing the altar. This is taking some time. God, I'm running out of space. I'm running out of ideas. God, are you really going to provide? And Abraham, uh, as he laid, laid the wood down and bound Isaac, his son. Young people, I want you to see the surrender of Isaac. Something he had no idea. God, why, why are you asking my dad to do this? I, what's happening? The surrender of Isaac. He says, God, I want to do whatever you want me to do. And he laid him, he picks Isaac up, lays him upon the altar. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But then the angel of the Lord called called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said those words again, here am I. Everybody say those words again. Here am I. Earlier he said, here I am, but now he says, here am I, God, here am I. And that's what I think we need to be challenged with in our own life this week is say, God, here I am. I don't know what you're wanting from me. I don't know what step of faith it is, but God, here I am. I'm willing to do whatever you ask me to do. Even if you ask me and you want to take some of something that I love the most, that God, I'll be willing to let it go if that's what you want me to do. Abraham said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know. What is it that God knows about us once we go through a test. What is it about us that God says, now I know your heart. Now I know I can trust that you're willing to do what I ask. Now I know that thou fearest God. That you reverence and love me more than anything. You love me more than the promises I've given you, more than the toys I've given you, more than the house you have, more than the, the special things that... that as Americans, we count so valuable. He says, I know, that, I know that you fear me and you love me. Seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. Can I ask us this question tonight? What are we withholding from God? If God was to say to Matt tonight, Matt, there's, there's this, this, or this that you're withholding from me. That you're not willing to give up. I've not asked for it, but if I was to ask for it, you, wouldn't, you would struggle with it. And you wouldn't want to give it. What is it that you're withholding from God? He says, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me, 
And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. Here's that third object lesson. A ram behind him caught in a thicket. He's caught by his horns, so he's probably a pretty good ram. Probably should go on the wall, I'm thinking. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering, and notice these words, in the stead of his son. How do you think Abraham's faith was increased when the Lord intervened? He already had faith and said God will provide, but what type of faith was increased because God intervened? Where is it in your life that you're asking God to intervene? Or are you so independent that you don't need God to intervene? That's the real question, right? God, I don't really need you to intervene in my life. I've got this under control. I'm a very independent Christian. I don't need you to help me out. I got this. And God's saying the whole time, no, you don't got this. You need me, and I want to intervene, but you're not asking for me to intervene, and you're not following that step of faith I've asked you to take. So how do you think Abraham's faith was increased? And here's a thought. If God were to provide too much for you, right, or for me too soon, how could this possibly hinder, hinder your spiritual development? If God was to give to me too much too soon, how would this hinder my spiritual development or my walk with God? Because, see, God always gives just enough, what, just in time. But a lot of times we feel like, oh, I've got enough. I don't need God. I've got this figured out. And God the whole time is saying, no, you don't have it figured out. As you notice the next verse here, it says, and Abraham called the name of that place. Could you imagine that place? Could you imagine every time that they were in that region of the mountain, what that place, that object lesson meant to Abraham? Could you imagine the emotion and the stir of urgency in his own life when he remembered how God intervened on that mountain and provided a, a substitute for his son? I can only imagine when he would look to that mountain region and he would see and look at that place and call it Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, I love how that is phrased, as it's said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be past tense seen. There's some things in our past that God has provided and intervened, and we need to rejoice in those. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? We need to rejoice in what God has been saying to us and what God has been stirring in you and the steps of faith that he's asked you to take in the past. Are you looking at those and saying, okay, God, I do remember that. And you know, I didn't quite follow through. I kind of did, but I didn't all the way. What is it that God would remind you of tonight and say, listen, you had told me you would walk, that you would take that step and you haven't fully taken that step. What am I withholding from God? Because we all want to say this and we all want to call some place in our life Jehovah Jireh. Can you say that name with me? Jehovah Jireh. A little bit louder, please. Jehovah Jireh. Like you mean it tonight. Jehovah Jireh. I got one person. Ready? One more time. One, two, three. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. I have seen him in this mountain. I have seen the Lord. He has intervened in the mountain of the Lord. It shall be seen. God has done it. What can we say in our life that God has done? that you can't take credit for? What can you say, God, you did that? I had nothing to do. That was just, that's just too good to be true. God, you did that because I was dependent upon you. And the angel the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. That's pretty cool. He got to do this twice. And he said, My, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, because, Abraham, you have done this thing, you've obeyed me in what I've asked you to do, and hast not withheld thy son, you have not withhold anything from me. I ask for what you love the most, that in, a, that in blessing I will bless thee. God will bless me. There's nothing like a blessing from God. When you know there's something that has happened or something that has transpired, God has intervened and you know it is God, there's nothing that can take that place. When God shines on you, you know it. And it says, in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. There's another object lesson he's reminded of. As the sand which is upon the seashore. How many of you enjoy the beach? Say amen. amen. Man, I love the sand on the feet, right? 
Uh, some people hate it, but I love it. Uh, the sand on the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. I'm going before you and all the battles ahead of you. I'm going to take care of you, Abraham. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And I want you to see these last three words. Because thou hast, what's the last three words? Obeyed my voice. When God calls your name, do you say, here am I or here I am? Or do you just kind of ignore the voice for a little while? Like, what is my first go-to response when the God shares his voice with me? And we all know it. It's almost like it is an audible voice, but it's not completely audible. It's just inside of our chest, and we hear God speaking. And we know what he wants us to do. What is one thing you can do to show your full dependency upon God in your daily walk this week? Can you think hard enough? This is where we, this is where we don't take the next step, right? We don't take the next application. We go like, that sounds great. That scripture is wonderful. That, that encouraged me. But then taking the next step, what is one thing you can do this week to show your full dependency upon God? What will it be? Will you ask God, God, what is one thing I can do for you that will show my dependency on you? What if I was to step out on faith and ask my coworkers, hey, um, let's all have prayer today before we start our day. What would that look like? What, how would that come across? And it might be a little awkward, but maybe that's a step of faith God's asking you to make. Maybe you should say, hey, um, family, we're going to do this, this, or this because I want to do this because I feel like I've asked God, what is one way I can have full dependency on you? And he said, I want you to do this with your family once a week, or I want you to do that with your kids every night, or I want you to do X, Y, or Z um, to show your full dependency on me. Would you ask God that this week? God, what is one way, what is one thing I can do to show my full dependency upon you? We're almost done. You don't have to turn there, but if you want to, Hebrews 11, verse 8 and 11. And it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, a big key word says obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. He didn't know where the destination was, but he stepped out on faith. Then I love how it says in verse 11, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. God gave her strength for her step of faith, just as he did Abraham. And she delivered a child when she was past age, obviously not the most ideal time to have a child, because she judged him faithful. How do you judge God tonight? Do you judge him faithful? Do you judge him uh, to, to provide, to intervene? Or are you so independent that, You're not dependent upon him. She judged him faithful who had promised. I want you to look for promises this week in your daily devotions, your daily walk, your 21 minutes of discipline in the morning. I want you to look for promises. Mark those promises and say, God, I'm claiming that promise today. I know it was their life and I know it was their story, but I'm still in this life and I'm still in my story. And God, you've given us your word to help us through our stories and I'm going to claim that promise. But I want, to, I want to ask you to do this tonight. Can you write your own sentence of what your faith has done or needs to do? As I said in those verses, by faith Abraham and through faith also Sarah, how would I write my statement? By faith Matt or Matthew or Matty B what? What am I going to write? By faith Matt did what or needs to do what? And the last question tonight, how do you want your faith to impact others? How do I want my faith to impact others? This week, as you go into the community, as you go to work, your faith is going to impact someone if you're using it. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What is the level of my diligency going to be this week? By faith, write your name. And what could you say needs to be done or has been done? In the mountain of God, the Lord shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh. El, Raoul, or Roy. What is it going to be? 
Would you bow for prayer with me? Lord, as we open this time of invitation, I pray that we would not hesitate, that God, right now, we would step out and build that altar that we need to tonight. Lord, help us to make this place a place of altars that are built. Help us to make this a place where we do not withhold anything from you. God, whatever it is that we love the most, if you were to ask for it, God, would we be willing to give it? These are hard questions, Lord. They're, they're a reflection of where my dependency or my independency is at. So God, I pray that tonight we would ask for you to use our faith to impact others. God, we don't know what this week looks like. We don't know what mountain we're going to be climbing. We don't know what you're going to ask for us to offer. But God, whatever it is that you're wanting us to offer, it could be just that faithful walk this week. God, would we use our faith to impact others? As we stay in an attitude of prayer, I'll finish my prayer in a moment. As the instruments played and as Marion just sings a verse of invitation, can I ask one question in the privacy of your heart tonight? You can remain seated tonight as we do the, uh, this time of prayer. As I ask you a question tonight, I would like to ask you, would you say that there is a step of faith or you're asking God for that step of faith? Can I ask you that tonight? What is the step of faith that God is asking of you or He's already let you know? How do you want your faith to impact the world this week? Will they see Jesus through you and by your actions and by your faith? Is there something that you need God to deliver? Is there some way you need Him to intervene in your life? Can I ask that honest question tonight? If you'd say, Matt, I identify with one of those statements tonight and I want to lift my hand in prayer and say, that's me. Here am I, God. Here am I. Here I am, God. I want you to know I am willing to take that step of faith. Would you lift a hand up tonight if that identifies with you that, God, I know you have a step of faith for me and I'm willing to take it. Would you raise your hand up tonight? Would you raise it up to heaven? Say, God, see my hand. I'm lifting my hand to you knowing that I want to obey you in the step of faith. With those hands raised, please leave them, leave them raised. I want to pray with you. God, I pray that you'd be with the hands that are raised right now. God, you know the heart of that hand. And God, that obviously the hand doesn't have to be raised for you to notice what's in the heart. But God, I pray for these of your people this week that are asking you for this step of faith. They're asking you to give them direction and something, a deliverance in something, to intervene in some way, or God, maybe they don't even know, uh, but they just have a desire to be used by you, and that, that you would use their faith and their walk with you to impact the world this week. I pray, God, that you'd use them. I pray, God, that you'd use us together. I pray, God, that you would work in our lives, help us to build altars this week, help us to bow before you and to seek you diligently, and God, may we truly use our faith to please you. It's in the power of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as Marion sings? Would you come if God has impacted your heart tonight?
calling heaven down to earth and you will fight my enemies and this will end in victory and i believe in yes i believe in and you make mountains move you make giants fall and you use songs of praise to shake prison walls and i will speak to my fear i will preach to my doubt you were faithful then you'll be faithful Father, we come to you in the close of our service, and we're just thankful, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh, you are El Roy, you are the God who sees, and God, you are the one who does object lessons in our life, and I thank you for the things that you've done um, in Stace and I's life, and the things that we can look back and see, uh, those mountains that we climbed, and the things that you have done, and the way you've provided. I just thank you for those times, and I thank you, Lord, for the steps of faith you have ahead of each of us, and I pray, God, that we would be faithful to uh, take those steps in our walk with you. Thank you, Lord, for your, um, your care for us, your love for us, Lord, your patience with us, and, God, that you would just allow us to truly be dependent upon you, that, God, our hearts and our lives would bring glory to you again. And again, thank you for the altars that we have that we can build not only in your house, but at our own homes and uh, those times where we just bring our hearts to you and we uh, look to your word. But God, make us even more hungry uh, for our own personal walk with you, that God, you'd speak to us. Allow us to really, really know what you have for us this week. Help us to look at some way we can show our full dependence upon you, that God, you'd give us a step that we could write in by faith we have Whatever you ask us to do, God, what would that be? So, Lord, use us this week. God, help us to uh, give our invitations out for Easter weekend and for Palm weekend. And uh, we're just so grateful for having the truth. God, we love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Right before we leave, I just want to give you a couple short uh, reminders. Uh, Not tomorrow night, but a week from tomorrow night. Uh, We're going to be refreshing the outside of the building, getting it ready for spring. And so if you would help us on that night, you can bring the kids. Uh, We love to get them dirty, uh, allow them to help us out. And uh, a lot of hands make light work. So that's next Monday. And then also, uh, seeing what what else we need to share, Uh, the uh, prayer for good weather. Will you please pray for that uh, for Easter weekend with that outreach in our community? And then also, I want to encourage you, um, if you will make sure to take some invitations, there's these smaller ones, uh, I want to challenge you tonight before you leave, that you would take one for each day. You take one for each day, you put it in your pocket and say, God, today, would you help me find someone I could invite? How many of you would take that challenge? Let me see your hand. Okay. If you would take that challenge, say, God, I'm going to take one of these a day and I'm going to look for who you want me to invite. God, would you go before me? Maybe this is your step of faith. You've never invited someone to anything. But maybe you're out of the routine of inviting someone. Just take one for each day and say, God, show me who it is that I need to invite to your house. Uh, So take those as you go. I do want to remind you of the prayer assembly that will be on Easter Sunday. Please take advantage of this with your church family. Please take uh, this as a serious time for us to meet together. 10 o'clock, we'll be meeting in the chapel from 10 to 10.40. Uh, There's a window of time. You can come through the chapel. You don't have to be there, obviously, that whole time. Uh, But slip in, slip out, have prayer with your family, with another family. Let's pray for our community. Uh, Let's pray for those people who are going to be here on the day before, which is on that Saturday. Let's pray for them to return on Easter Sunday morning, that God would draw them to his house. And so uh, if you would do that, say amen. All right, God bless you tonight. You're dismissed. Have a great week.
redemption on the way forgiveness like the tide rolling in taking up the space where shame has lived receiving all that you died to give let the wind the tide roll to the earth knows you're a god of love let my dry bones sing a new song all the glory to the god of love